Okay, a lot of background noise there. <laughs> What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're having a beautiful day. Thank you, as always, for being here. What are we listening to today? We're listening to a little bit of Tommy James and the Shondells. We're going to listen to the track Crimson and Clover, which is off of the album of the same name, released in 1968. So this was recommended to me, and I had never heard of Tommy James and the Shondells. However, I didn't realize it, but I have heard of them because I've heard Crystal Blue's Persuasion. Uh, Crystal Blue Persuasion is like, that's a great track. I think I first heard that we used to have like a little retro diner here in Orlando, and it was called Five and Diner. I just love going there. And I remember hearing it first there, and then later on, I heard it on Breaking Bad. I'm pretty sure it was on Breaking Bad because of the meth blue. Uh, so, yeah, that's a great song. So I did not know that that was the same band uh, that made that. So we're going to listen to a little bit of Crimson and Clover. This is going to be the extended version, I believe. It says long version next to it. I know there was a single version, and, you know, I mean, I want to go with the longer version. That's probably a little best. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump into it. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Let's do it. If, it feels, it sounds echoey in here. Sounds, sounds different. All right, let's go. This is Crimson and Clover by Tommy James and the Shondells. I'm just going to fool around, man. Like, just do a thing, you know, whatever. And I'll just, you know. Uh...
this is a sunny day in a sort of daydream haze. And I'm talking about a specific kind of haze, <laughs> you know? This is relaxing, psychedelic, the effects that are thrown in guitar-wise throughout the song, especially the second half. And then you definitely get some with the vocals returning on the end there, which I'll have to look up exactly what's being done there, but I would imagine it's something guitar-related because it sounds like the vocals are going through some sort of, not an amp or anything like that, but something guitar-related, like, it just sounds like that. Um, the harmonies are beautiful. I love how it starts off in a dreamy kind of uh, soundscape and then slowly moves its way into something just a little bit more ethereal, a little more, like I said, psychedelic. It has a nice progression, almost from uh, soft-spoken reality into an alternative dreamland. It opens up so softly here, very soul, very soft rock and roll, like that old 60s rock and roll. I love the drumming, by the way, but it's really the guitars that I'm drawn to here, and the guitars, it seems, are being played by Eddie Gray. Uh, I would just imagine Eddie Gray, I don't know, but I would be led to think that he has some sort of interesting technique when it comes to the production. Maybe it's him, maybe it's him working with the producer, the engineer perhaps, because there is a lot of wavy guitar in here that just kind of like is fl <laughs> it's floating in a certain kind of ebb and flow that leads you into this kind of dream, uh, dreamy atmosphere and mood that the song has. Yeah, that's very classic, like, 60s. Like, that's a very, very specific sound of the period. And the waves crashing of the vocals coming back and forth as we're bespoken to this psychedelic waltz. Not waltz, but this psychedelic solo that we're getting here is really tasteful. But here at the end, I like how we get this return, but it sounds a lot different than before. So the effects that are being used on the vocals are really interesting, of course, like I said, in lieu of the guitar. It just all comes together in this very dreamy piece of psychedelic rock or pop or soul, whatever it may be, it's got it. So I think that this is really interesting when I'm reading about it on Wikipedia. Based on suggestions from radio stations, the group chose to create an extended five and a half minute version of the song for the album. So how interesting and how times have changed where before apparently the radio station encouraged them to make a longer version where now they just want you to put out a quick verse, a quick chorus and get out. <laughs> and then regarding, I guess, the extension and then regarding the extended part in the solos here, it says that the first two verses were copied without lead vocals and overdubbed with guitar solos by Sean Dell's guitarist Ed Gray using steel guitars and fuzz guitars. Okay, so that kind of makes sense then. Uh, what we heard there in the uh, in the break there. Let's go ahead and talk about the lyrics. Ah, uh, now I don't hardly know her, but I think I could love her, Crimson and Clover. Ah, uh, I wish she'd come walking over. Now I've been waiting to show her Crimson and Clover over and over. Okay, so he's just smitten by this person who he's really never met, but he says, I don't know her, but I think I could love her. I think I could fall in love with her. And he says he wants to show her Crimson and Clover which I'm not quite sure what is representing. When I think crimson, I think of blood. I think red. Red is also the color typically of hearts and love. So it could be like love. And then clover, I think of luck. <laughs> like maybe love and luck go together. Maybe they'll be lucky, he'll get lucky, she'll get lucky, they'll get lucky. I don't know. That's at least what I'm feeling. Yeah, my, my, such a sweet thing. I want to do everything. What a beautiful feeling, crimson and clover over and over or maybe he feels lucky right he feels lucky to have even seen this person that he's so taken by the title crimson and clover was decided before a song had been written for it the combination of unknown meaning came to james as he was waking up comprising his favorite color crimson and his favorite flower clover okay so it's just one of those times where you come up with the title of the song before making the song and then you begin to write a song to kind of fit the ideas together. Okay, I always think that's interesting. You know, I've mentioned it once before, I think on another video, but you know, when artists and musicians are coming up with new songs, do you think of the title or concept first and then begin to write music towards it? Or do you just kind of make music and then eventually kind of, you know, throw in the songs, the concepts and the themes into it with whatever fits? I always think that's, that's really interesting. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought of the track. Of course, you can let me know in the comments below. I hope that you're having a beautiful one. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. <laughs> Bye.